welcome back to the show. I'm here with Christian Taylor. No. Hi. Drew Dick is back. Say hi to Drew, everyone. Say hi, Drew. Thank you. Say, Thank you. Say hi to I, everyone. I hear you. I hear you. Say hi to everyone. Yeah. Hi. Okay, Oh, good. sorry. I got to say hi back. And Sky Jatani. Hello. Yeah. Sky's here. Drew's here. We're talking about... It is... We're recording this the day before Halloween. You will be watching this several days after Halloween. So keep that in mind. Uh, mm. Sky is wearing his costume. Uh, uh, his I, Halloween costume. This year I am costumeless. He's going as the thoughtful, maybe terrorist. The, 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 the cardigan <laughs> yeah, terrorist. The cardigan. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I am dressed like a middle-aged <laughs> white editor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Canadian so, yeah. editor. Yeah. I, I'm buying it. You see it? I do. Okay. It yeah. works for me. And I'm going as the creator of Veggie Tales. So thank you. I'm pulling it off wonderfully. Uh, quick theme song. I didn't have any requests. I think everyone just tired of it. Yes. I think. Make it spooky. Oh. <laughs> What about like the Monster Mash guy? Hey, it's a podcast. What do you know? Hey, it's a podcast. And we've got video. Hey, it's a podcast. So lend it here. The Phil Vischer podcast starts right here. And that's all I want to do. Because that would take a... That's yeah, slow. it's slow. That's slow. It's yeah. too slow. So, ta-da! <laughs> the, the abbreviated Monster that was Mash. That the, the abbreviated Monster Mash. <laughs> Mash. This is the monster mash. Okay, Not Becky. Yeah, that's pretty good. <clears throat> Becky Davis wrote into us. Do you know who Becky Davis is? You don't have to. Mm-mm. Phil, I don't understand. That's a good way to start Uh-oh. something. I don't understand, Becky says. You keep saying that Peter Bogosian's mission and yours is to get both sides talking. But one of the first things that you originally pointed out from his book is that he advises his readers to tell people with religious beliefs that they belong at the kids' table, that they don't get to be in grown-up conversations. If he has genuine frustration over atheists not wanting your voice heard, does he have some regret over publishing a book promoting that censorship? That's a good question. I think if, if, if I remember correctly from his book, that statement of uh, tell them they belong at the kids' table was directed towards people who attempt to use the Bible as an argument-settling authority in pluralistic conversations, as in a la hmm. Congress. So if That's someone a la a l a yeah a a l a h as in a la mode, not a la uh, as great. Um, so if you if you stand up in Congress and say yeah, but the Bible says and there I did it. You so did Southern it. accent. You I'm sorry. Man. I apologize. I couldn't help it. Okay, let's do like. Uh, New York. Yeah, but the Bible says... Uh, see, that's not even believable, because <laughs> no one has ever said that in that accent, ever. Uh, I've met a few. <laughs> oh, you haven't. I have. Anyway, uh, that, that his point is that's when they're no longer speaking um, a language that should be spoken in a pluralistic context. And I kind of agree with him there, and I kind of, but I disagree with the approach, because basically what he's saying is, uh, at that point, belittle them. Uh, and, and I think it's much better to say, wait a minute, you recognize this is a pluralistic society, and so you can't hold an authority that is only a, an authority to your tribe and say there should be an authority to everyone's tribes, Right. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now, you know, would he rephrase that in a, in if he was writing today? I don't know. I don't know. I could ask him. Um, okay. And then she goes on to say, but he wasn't just saying if you if you bump into someone who's religious, tell them to go sit at the kids' table. He wasn't <laughs> taking a position that. Uh, extreme. And then Becky goes on to say, I also think that Sky's definition of fundamentalist is incorrect. He's using the words fundamentalist and intolerant interchangeably. Uh-huh. I think this is a mistake and maligns honorable people from all sorts of categories, Christians, vegans, animal rights activists, etc. As a Christian, I think this is especially harmful. We do not want to promote the idea that clinging to the fundamentals of Christianity means you are intolerant and won't live peacefully in our pluralistic society. Am I supposed to respond to that? Yeah, I think so, because it was addressed well. Yeah, I, that, this is exactly why I tried to differentiate the theological and historical definition of fundamental mm-hmm. or fundamentalist mm-hmm. from the sociological definition mm-hmm. of fundamentalist. Mm. And mm-hmm. the sociological definition is a person of any belief system who is intolerant of, of anyone else's views that differ from their own right. and, and a desire to 
eliminate or silence those who disagree with them. Your point being hmm. Hmm. there is a new definition of fundamentalism yes. that is prevalent in in pluralistic society. Yes. I will say it's a little <clears throat> unfair to the original fundamentalists it is. of the yes. 1920s. I agree. Yeah. They weren't out to behead anyone, for instance. Right. And they were a good bunch of people. Well, I don't well, know. Well, and that's what her were... point is, is they were Christians <laughs> who wanted to stick to the fundamentals of right. the faith, and that's an right. admirable thing. So, our, But there are, there are people who would say, you know, I go to a fundamentalist Christian church, mm -hmm. or I'm a Christian fundamentalist, and certainly not imply any intolerance about that. Well, they're using a word then while historically accurate, yeah. is going to completely miscommunicate what they intend to say in today's culture. Right. Which is why you're more likely to hear, I go to a Bible-believing church. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the cool. word fundamentalist is not typically used of oneself anymore because yeah. it's uh -huh. seen as such a pejorative term. Yeah. Right. Right. Although I will say... And evangelicals it, quickly follow Exactly. That. In the secular media, evangelical and fundamentalists are interchangeable that's right. almost. So that's become a very tangible... If you go on Twitter, yeah. I did this a while ago. I went on Twitter and I just quickly started scrolling through all my followers yeah. to see how they describe themselves. <laughs> Nobody describes themselves as an evangelical. Uh, or even a Christian. Yeah, very few Christians. Too. No they're, Christians. They're I'm all, the only Christian on Twitter. They're all Christ followers or Jesus adventurers or yes. happy, slappy, dreamy Christian people or something mm -hmm. like that. Or mm -hmm. ideation, cultural, Architect. maverick. Yeah. Architects. Pastors. There's yeah. no pastors. No, no pastors they're, anymore. They're all, they're all cultural architects for the kingdom of God or something crazy. Yeah, really? Something very grandiose. Yeah. We can't be pastors anymore? Because it's got a negative connotation. Yeah. yeah. Like secretary. <laughs> right. Like, and stewardess. Like terrorist. Yeah, I prefer yeah. I prefer cardigan Al Qaeda. Terrorist used to be such a nice word. I know. Yeah, and well, now it's just been. Call your yeah. mother a terrorist. That's right. She just say hey. thank you, dear. And a few bad apples ruined it for everyone. One person's terrorist apples. is another person's freedom. Fighter. That's true. That's true. <sighs> That's right. Were the founding fathers terrorists? Were they ever called terrorists by the British? Were they called terrorists in Parliament? Probably worse. I bet, I bet the, the Tea Party guys, the Boston Tea Party. I bet they yeah. were called terrorists. You can't mess with British tea. Don't mess no, with our no. tea. No, no, no. That's, that's or, our, or our tax revenue. Right. Even more importantly. Okay. Speaking of uh, fundamentalism and or conservative, so do, are we conservative Christians? What do we call ourselves I've if been, every label is not what, pejorative? I Keep have been around. struggling with that for quite a few years, actually. Because when you say conservative Christian, then people go, they go you, Republican. Do you mean politically conservative? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then, well, even if you mean theologically conservative, how conservative? Conservative? Do you mean right? Or I could say I've thought, okay, I'm an Orthodox Christian. Oh, you mean Greek Orthodox? Russian, or Russian oh, yeah, Orthodox? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a real Christian. Oh, that's not condescending. <laughs> what? <laughs> one, the one, rest of you. One I'm term, not a liberal Christian. One term I have flirted with, <laughs> but I don't think it has enough uh, buy-in to be defined yet, is yeah. common good Christian. Yeah, that mm. doesn't mean anything to anyone. Right, but I'd like to define it and then own it. Okay. Kind of, you know, common good Christian. Trademark it. TM. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Pat it. Riley and, and Three Pete or Two Pete or whatever he. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speaking of uh, con conservative hyper. Cons okay. Ken Ham. TM. Ken Ham TM has a little bit of an issue with, you know, he's building an arc park. He's building an arc park. Arc park. Yeah. Arc park. You know the arc park? I've, I've heard rumors. Yeah. yeah. Where is how, it? How many aardvarks in an arc park? Two. Uh, it's it's in Kentucky. Of course. It's in Kentucky near the Creation Museum. Of course, yeah. Of course. It's becoming a little like Disney World Kingdom there where they have multiple yeah. attractions. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a kerfuffle going on right now because um, he the, the state of Kentucky had agreed to give him tax incentives for really? creating jobs. Mm -hmm. Cuz you create jobs. Everybody sure. likes that. So they were going to give him, you know, I don't know, $20 million in tax incentives, something like that. But it's a religiously... Uh, the problem is, there's no problem, because as part of the hiring practices of Answers in Genesis, which would be the hiring practices for the ARC Park, uh, uh, people have to sign on to their statement of faith, mm -hmm. including yep. specifics about that you believe in a literal six-day creation, you believe in a literal worldwide flood, you believe in a literal Adam and Eve... You know, so. Because they can't be serving ice cream cones at the Ark Park <laughs> and have their theology be well, in any way no. deviant. Or the from, guy in the dinosaur suit. Yeah. So what's, turns out to be no. So say. what's happened? <laughs> it turns out to be a girl. Yeah. In the dinosaur suit. Exactly. 
Anyway, um, so the, the state of Kentucky has sent them a letter saying that would violate our non-discrimination policy. Sure. So if you, mm. if you want the tax incentives, you can't put restrictions on hiring which has led to the answers in Genesis saying, well, that's our, our religious freedom, you know. So now we're in a Hobby Lobby kind of Chick-fil-A Uh-oh. kind of scenario. Yeah, of, but that's... Are you no, telling us how to practice different. our religion? That's different, though, because... Is it? Fine. They, they, no one's infringing on their religious freedom. They're saying you can still discriminate in your hiring, but the state doesn't have to pay money. you for that. Yeah. 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 There's, no, there's no right to state financial incentives. Right. But they're... they're yeah. They're just incentives to create jobs. But for, they're jobs that aren't equally available. Christians. They're jobs that are not equally available to the citizens of Kentucky. Yeah. They're yeah. jobs that are only available so, to certain people in Kentucky. That Well, it's the same with, but, say, a Christian college's hiring practices. Right. Then. But these but sound more get strict. Subsidies. Colleges get subsidies. The students do. Um, right? You can get student yeah. loans and things. Yeah. But well, know. and there's governmental aid, though. That yeah, there's governmental aid and stuff. Free money. Okay, so... So uh, these sound rather specific. You have to sign off on the. They are quite specific. The Basically, six day creation. If you yeah. work at the Ark Park, yeah, you should completely tow the party line so that you could actually be effectively a tour guide. You know, oh, then yes, walk somebody. Yes. Like every employee should be a tour guide. But see, I could see that applying to tour guides. Yeah. But if you are on the janitorial staff, mm-hmm. do you still have to adhere to those? qualifications. Right, because you never know when you're cleaning the bathroom and someone says, could you explain to me the arc in this theological significance? You know, that person could probably give a Why did T-Rex have big teeth? And if you don't say it was to crack coconuts, you say it was to rip apart meat. Oh, right. You know, that's a problem. Right, that's that's a problem. How is is it different, though? And this is is what I think is, is interesting. If... Uh, Nordstrom's wants to hire people, they will screen them for values. You know, they'll screen them to say, how much do you value customer service? How much do you <laughs> value an amazing customer experience? You know, they say, do you fit our culture? If you don't fit their culture, you don't get the job. Ken Ham wants to hire someone basically saying, how do you fit our culture? Our culture is we're seven-day literal, six-day literal creationists. If you don't fit our culture, you don't get the job. Well, this, How's that different? This gets back mm. to what I said, was it last week? Yeah. About our culture has not figured out a clear definition of religion. Mm. Yeah. And so to discriminate on the basis of religion, mm-hmm. we say is wrong. Mm-hmm. But to discriminate on the basis of do you conform to our institution's cultural values, which are not explicitly religious, right. that's not wrong. Right. So, which yeah, is it gets why very, at Vanderbilt yeah. University... The atheists can say you need to be an atheist. Can they? Can the atheists discriminate on belief? In, in a, or the secularists? You have to be a secularist to lead our student secularists. Well, they won't be able to union. if things keep going the way they are for Christian groups on campus. I'm just saying it, but is yeah. that a religious group? Does that hmm. pertain to civil rights? Well, the, the IRS it, said that a, a religious uh, or an atheist humanist was it a chaplain? Yeah. Is eligible for the uh, oh, no, housing allowance? No, it was the leadership of the, the uh, Center for the Freedom from Religion Association. Right. It was a humanist society. <laughs> yes, and humanist they said society. the leader of that is a clergyman. Yeah. Who's a, who, right. No, it's freedom from religion, and they <laughs> right. get it. Okay. And they actually didn't want the tax break. They didn't want it. But they didn't want it. So the IRS has yeah. declared that an atheist mm. uh, leader can be considered clergy. Okay. So, they, so there you go. They just declared that atheism is so a belief system, which is akin to religion. For avid bicyclists, mm-hmm. can they require that the president of their chapter is an avid bicyclist? That's a <laughs> or good is question. that discrimination? But that's acceptable discrimination because it's not. Every every hiring practice involves discrimination. Right? Well, every choice involves Except discrimination. In, in your I, case, Drew. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> no, but you hire someone in, and they say, you know, or you're interviewing someone for a job and they say, well, I'm not really a hard worker. I kind of mm. dial it in. <laughs> and you say, well, you know, at our company, we kind of like hard workers. Yeah. And, and he says, don't discriminate against right. me just because I'm lazy. Right. I mean, you could get crazy you, you could, could crazy you say that this. lazy is part of your gender identity. <laughs> I identify yes. as male lazy. Yes. Dress as woman. Yes, but that, not the, that, that, that the key word there is identity, though. Things like one's gender, race, uh, religious belief, 
national nationality or but ethnicity. But now you have to define what a religious belief well, is. Well, exactly. That's my point, sure. is we've yeah. not yet done that as a society or legally. Okay, I was listening to NPR this morning. Yeah. They're talking about the Day of the Dead. You know Day of the Dead? Yeah. Mm. Mexican holiday? Mm -hmm. Quasi. Can you say it in Spanish? Dia de, Dia Dia de la Muerta. Oh, very nice. Thank Pretty you. Pretty good. So, uh, and they were talking about the origins of it, and obviously it, it started with the indigenous uh, Mexicans, mm -hmm. it, you know, and then and then they said, and so they had all these traditions about what they did to re, to honor the dead, <laughs> and then uh, the Spanish showed up, and so today, and this is actually what they said on NPR, and so today there's a religious aspect of it mm. because of the Catholics. But it wasn't religious no, before the Catholic. That's Catholics. what they were implying. <laughs> <laughs> that, that the tribal religion that created it, that's not religion. No. Because no. that's pure and good. Because that, that was something indigenous. Right. Oh, but religion yes. is something that's global and then applied to indigenous the colonial people. power came in and yeah, said, right. Right. So, yeah. so Catholicism is a religion. Mm -hmm. Incaism mm -hmm. or Mayaism, that's not. That's not a religion. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. there you go. There's okay. a, that's a there great illustration of the confusion that we have as a society about what is religion. Okay, speaking of confusion, not only is Ken Ham having some issues, uh, so is Bill Maher. You know, oh, Bill. We're going to the other end of the scale yeah, here. we're going on the other end of the scale. No, I think they come around Ken, to mate, but... Ken yeah. Ham and Bill Maher, they should be on the same show at least once before... They'd be the odd couple. ...both die. <laughs> That would just be yeah. awesome. Anyway, Bill Maher... They, you should force them to spend, like, one of those Big Brother house things where they have yeah. to live together <laughs> yeah. with a camera for, like, a week. They should just both be on an episode of Survivor. You know, naked. Put, that put naked Survivor yeah, show. Yeah, Naked and Afraid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's put Ken Ham and Bill Maher on Naked and Afraid. No one would want to see either of them naked, first of all. that just It would, would make me very or afraid. afraid. Or afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bill Maher has been invited to give the commencement address at uh, mm -hmm. UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, there's now a petition that's been signed by more than a thousand students to rescind the invitation because of what he said about Islam. Islam, sure. Because he is, quote, a racist and a bigot. What is the difference between yeah. a racist well, and a, a bigot? A, a racist? Can you be a racist and not be a bigot? Uh, no, but you can be a bigot not. and not a racist. Yes. So, but why don't they just say he's a racist? Um, well, here's the trick. I don't understand the racist charge, though, because he's criticizing Islam, okay, and yeah. you can debate the merits of that. But Islam is not an ethnicity. Right. That's the first issue, okay. is how yeah. can you yeah. call him a racist when Islam isn't a race? Mm -hmm. I, I was corrected by our friend Solomon, who said I would keep pronouncing Islam wrong. And yeah. You say Islam. Islam. It's oh. Islam. 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 Is Islam. Islam. Not ish or is. It's Islam. Oh, come on, though. On this side is of the pond. Islam. Like Islamabad. Like Islamophobia. Right? So it's just right. a matter of right. emphasis. Islam. Islam. Emphasis <laughs> and subpoena. <laughs> subpoena. <laughs> don't. I don't know if you listened last week. Don't he mispronounced even, subpoena. Don't even he was start. Reading. I was no. reading. Oh, no. it was, uh, I had been drinking heavily. It was I, endearing. I, I, yeah, it was just darling. Um, okay, so Islam <laughs> is not an ethnic group. No. It's not no, a no, race. No. So but a lot of Americans do associate it with, with non white European yeah. folks. So I decided to look up the definition of bigot. What is the... Oh, you did? Yeah. You oh, know what the definition okay. of bigot is? It's one It's who a is stale baguette. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. It's one who is intolerant of any group other than his own. Okay. So oh, that's like be, xen xenophobic. Is that... But that's yeah. about race, though. That's about... That's about... Yeah, that's true. That's people. about the princess so war. If you're, <laughs> if you're an, an ethnic bigot, you're also a, a xenophobe. Is xenophobe. that different than just being a racist? Because that's it's not... Just, it's, it's what really educated people call racist. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to show that they're also intellectually superior. Right, like if, well, no, and I think it's just like all other people groups. I'm phobic of them. Whereas a racist might single out a certain ethnicity and go, I really don't like those yeah. dudes. So, yeah. a, so a bigot is intolerant of any group but their own. And, you know, because actually uh, when this story came out that, that Bill Maher was being... Well, he's not a bigot. ...petitioned against, mm, yet my he, friend Peter Bogosian sent me an email definition. and said, what do you think about this? Because yeah. I don't... And I said, I don't think he's either because he is... 
Uh, first of all, he was in, in his original interview with Charlie Rose, where the, the ruckus was raised for the first time, he was actually favorably comparing Christianity to is, Islam. <laughs> you poor thing. You're just going to struggle you. with that. I'm so trying. Yeah. <laughs> um, give me credit for that, Solomon. Uh, he, he was favorably comparing Christianity, which is not his group. Right. So he was... Yeah, but he's also slammed Christianity a yeah, well, lot. Yeah, he hates yeah. Christianity, but that's not the point. In yeah. this case, sure. he wasn't... He's not rejecting any group but his well, own. Well, okay, he's, he's not gay, and he's not anti... LGBT. He's yeah, not. That's he's not a yep. woman, and he's not anti-women. He's yeah. you know he's a he's a a white upper class educated liberal. Right. But it right. doesn't mean he's against everyone who's well, not it just, him. It just seems like we don't have a, a good we don't have a good label. You know, because you can be a homophobe. You can be. You know, we've got lots lots of good labels. We don't have a good label for someone who's anti-religion. You know, so if someone insults your religion, ah, uh, yeah, we don't have a good way to to try yeah. to label them mm. to get. People. And that's a powerful thing to have that. Yes, that phobe you need the label. Thing. So, yeah. th- and that's why I Should guess we come Is- up with Islamophobe one? is being thrown around. Yeah. Is that's Reli- a label. Religion for- phobe. Yeah, no, like, uh, like, that's the, off the tongue. like homophobe was created. <laughs> yeah, 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 because there was no term and that for was a highly effective. It was yeah. highly effective term. Well, so and it's so silly because it, we, I mean, anyway, yeah. do we need to come up with like a Christophobe? Christ, <gasps> Christophobe. There is actually or, a book called Christophobia. Uh, evangel, really? Uh, evangelophobe. Yeah. Evangelophobe. Fundamental phobe. <laughs> Fundophobe. So that sounds like a disease Fundophobe. or something. Fundophobe. <laughs> that's a ride at the county fair. Yeah, that sounds like a website. <laughs> so it sounds like games. a disease to me. The test came back. It's fundophobe. <laughs> it's fun for the whole um, family phobe. Uh, he was so young. I also when he got wondered though, because because I was I was actually having this conversation with with uh, Peter Bogosian, because he he emailed me at one point and said, "Why is it okay for us to insult the Bible?" But not the Quran. Mm-hmm. You know, like what is yeah. the difference? And because we got done killing people for that a couple hundred years ago. Uh, yeah, we did. We yeah. finished. We don't do it anymore. Right. Nope. It was fun for a while, but we don't do it anymore. It was done with a couple of we got burned out girls no that pun we intended. burned out in Salem, and then we said, "All right, we're done." That's it. That was for witchcraft. Yeah, yeah that's that, right. Non sulfur. That was insulting the Bible. It's a part of that. Blah blah blah. Con- blah. Consorting with the devil in the, yeah. the woods. Yeah. Uh, and it, and so Crucible. and I said, well, mm-hmm. part of it I think is a, is still cultural guilt, kind of a you know mm. an anti-colonial regret, where Christianity was part of the package that the British were exporting to the world to save them from their and the Europeans in general, yeah, from their barbarism. Sure. Well, yeah, the Spanish earlier, but you know, most recently the British right. saying the whole world should be under our rule because we've got it figured out. And part of the package you get are our values, our Jewish prudence, our economic system, and our Christian faith, which will bring you out of your, hmm. your backwardsness. Mm-hmm. And when we rejected uh, colonialism. That's part of what we rejected was the notion that, you know, oh, how can you say that the Indians are wrong? You know, just stop mm-hmm. saying everyone is wrong. So that's part of yeah. the package of rejecting colonialism is to elevate the indigenous, you know, and say, whatever you believe, we're going to leave you with that. That's fine. And you think that dynamic is at play in our um, yes. unwillingness to denounce some of the more brutal parts yeah, of Islam? Yeah. Now, and I would say, though, to steal a phrase Good from job. George W. Bush. Yes. That Which there is on the doer, left a soft bigotry, evil doer, evil doer soft bigotry yeah. that comes from the left on this topic that says, oh, well, they're less advanced or developed than we are. So we give them a pass on some of the awful things that they're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I, you know, I think what people don't realize is an awful lot of, of contemporary Western liberalism is really just anti-colonialism. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And therefore, it, and that's what Bill Maher, I think, is getting caught up into, is he's trying to say, why aren't other liberals denouncing various forms of Islam that keep women oppressed or that uh, have brutal right. justice systems or whatever? Why aren't liberals crying out about this? And what he's forgetting is that most liberalism in the West is really anti-colonialism, which is exactly what you're saying, Phil. Yeah. Is they're not going to speak out against those things because the, the whole reaction that's, is that's against... A, a form of oppression. Exactly. Yeah. And Bill Maher is trying to just be a flat-out liberal in advocating for right. equal rights for all and on and on, and, and that's right. what the disconnect is. It's, hmm. it's an interesting hmm. thing. It is an Where interesting thing. Where do you thing. think it goes from here? 
I think there's a there's a crisis in liberalism that will result from globalization mm-hmm. because they can't continue to just react against Western imperial colonialism. They have to look at the whole world and go, right. actually, some of these indigenous cultures and these indigenous religions that we thought were mm-hmm. oppressed by European ideas aren't all that great themselves either. Right. And we can't right. just target one as the problem. Well, and that's why the story that we covered a few months ago that was on the cover of Christianity Today about the effect of Western Protestant missionaries on developing countries mm-hmm. was so radical because it completely goes against the current liberal narrative, you know, that everything about colonialism... That was, was a delayed CT ...was thing. bad. Yeah, that was really delayed. My phone went to sleep. Everything about colonialism was bad. Everything the white man has yeah. done to the rest of the world is bad. <clears throat> you know, it's the theme of many of our movies. It's, you know, it's Pocahontas. It's what you hear in college. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, the noble savage back from, you know, what, the 16th, 17th century. Um, and everything that we do is to destroy... The earth, and you actually, well, no, look, here's actual data that the presence of Protestant missionaries helped these countries develop into healthy democracies today. Yeah. And people just, that narrative is just, I, that doesn't yeah. fit. It yeah. Well, doesn't. And the point being that I think folks on both sides need to have a more careful, nuanced investigation of their view of history. Mm-hmm. So the liberals want to say everything that white Protestant Europe did in the colonial era was bad. Yeah. Well, no, a lot of it was bad, but there are actually some redeeming things here that we need to look at. Similarly, on the conservative side, a lot of folks want to say, well, everything America's ever done was ultimately good or right, right. everything that Christian Christi, um, Christendom did was great. Well, no, mm-hmm. we got to be honest about it. There's a whole lot that was terrible. And right. nobody wants to be nuanced. They all just want to paint with a broad brush. The only innocent ones are the Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not true, but it, more innocent than others. What is it? The, the French Canadians or all Canadians? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. You got the French Canadians See, and the English little, Canadians. And yeah, no. The only time I've ever that. been accused of xenophobia was by a French Canadian. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. What was the context, though? The French peas. Because <laughs> they were bad guys in the first video. But that's they a were play in. off of Monty Python. That's what I said. <laughs> So it's truly Monty Python. Well, clearly Monty Blame Python is Monty also Python. guilty of... <sighs> See, but it's it's funny because like like Matt Stone and Trey Parker can do anything oh, yeah. mm-hmm. in, in, in South Park now. They can do anything. They can make fun of anyone and people just say, yeah, well, that's, you know, that's South Park. Sure. That's funny. That's funny. And and they can write the Book of Mormon and just lacerate the Mormon faith. And you think Veggie Tales should get the same pass? <laughs> <laughs> No, just me personally. Oh, okay. Me personally. No, no. We, we. The Book of Mormon is. is I went to see it just to see what all the hubbub was about. Is Mormons abs- love it, don't they? Oh, yeah, they're all over it. It's absolutely hilarious. It's profoundly insulting to Mormons. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State of the United States, goes and sees it and walks out and says, "That was wonderfully funny." Oh, really? Yes. Where if, if it had been a, a, a Broadway there go, show, there goes the Mormon vote. African Americans yes, or, 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 or even Muslims. Muslims. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it was about Muslims and not yeah. Mormons. Why Mormons? Because they're white and they look so happy. Is that why we? Well, can and make one fun of them of was running for president, which means they got to be doing pretty well. I guess that's true. So you and they're so nice. Be, you have to be oppressed to be free from critique. Yes. Or, okay. or dangerous. Because it was one of the things in the press release about Bill Maher, one of the statements was he is, um, he is insulting a, a historically marginalized there it is. people. That's the key. And we, we live in a culture now where the real power goes to think those. I Muslims are historically Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm sorry. We, we, they were the Colossus of the ancient world. We live in a culture where power goes to those who can claim victimhood. Yeah. If you yeah. are a victim, oh, then you are powerful. Oh. And if you are when the there are oppressor, there are 1.6 billion you... of you, I don't know if you can claim the victim. So I, I think the Mormons have a better the, case. Is that why the next Marvel superhero movie is Victim Man? <laughs> well, he has watch the out. ultimate power. I, well, that's what's so always frustrating. Just falling down is and <laughs> crying and <laughs> there seems <laughs> but people you can't just touch him. Yeah, there exactly. seems to be this race going on between uh, liberals and conservatives, Christians, for example, and the LGBT. Oh, we're see, not going to win that one. To see who can claim victimhood. <laughs> I'm sorry. Most. So, 
you know, now there's this movement among Christians say, oh, no, we're oppressed, we're persecuted, uh, our rights are being infringed, Be- First I Amendment. Because I can't hire someone to sell uh, slushies at my ARC park and, and force him to believe the, right. the or worth is the, the whole war on Christmas thing that's been going on for years. Yeah, where, oh, we can't we say are, Merry Christmas anymore because we're a persecuted minority. Right. And and I think the, the driver instinct is if I can prove I'm a victim, then I get power status in the culture. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of sick and but bizarre. But did you hear about the guy in Oklahoma? You know the, the Ten Commandments in Oklahoma? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, they've been there. And people didn't want them there. or People fought against it. But Oklahoma wanted them there. But atheists didn't want the Ten Commandments there. And they wanted to put... And that's where our friend Lucius Greaves mm-hmm. wanted to put a satanic monument there that's on the right. same yeah. spot. you got to say his name like, um, like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Lucius Greaves. <laughs> <laughs> that's a scary enough sounding name, by itself. Yeah, he made it up. It's not his real name. Oh, okay. Well, so there you go. Um, a guy drove his car into the monument and, and mentally busted it. ill dude yeah. busted it. And into he said pieces. the devil made him do it. Satan told him to drive his car into the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And do you know where it broke? On what commandment? <laughs> Thou shall not take the Lord's name in vain. That's the really? one. Yeah. So I don't know what that means, but well, you know, Moses, <laughs> Moses <laughs> smashed the Ten Commandments. Also. That's true. You're right. <laughs> I don't so, think the devil made him do it. So he's no. following in, in fine footsteps. Yeah. There is a he's history there. Do you remember that shoes. scene from the Mel Brooks History of the World Part 1? When he drops one. He yeah, has three he's, tablets. Right. I give you the 15, whoops, uh, the 10 <laughs> commandments. Yeah, that was kind of funny. <laughs> the Inquisition, uh, let's begin. The Inquisition, <laughs> no, look out sin. The Inquisition, <laughs> we're on a mission to convert the Jews. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you. Which really wasn't what the Spanish that's Inquisition was about. Wonderful interlude. Not exactly. Thank you. That's, a, that's a different topic. That's nice. Okay, do you know what time of year it is? Anyone? Hallow's Eve. What? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? You, you, Halloween. You said that with the appropriate... Um, Just not, try, I was trying to make Islamic it scary. It sounded German. Almost. Yeah, it sounded yeah. Nazi-like. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh. Are you going as a Nazi this year? <laughs> like you did last year? <laughs> Shh. You and uh, Prince Philip, or what? Who's not Prince Philip? Prince Henry. Harry. Henry. Henry. Harry. Harry. I think it's Harry, the little one. You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. Everyone. You're a Nazi, Harry. (laughs) All right. While you're figuring out your computers, should we do? (laughs) What is happening, Uh Phil? (laughs) I don't know what that is. We're having technical difficulties. Oh, Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay, everyone. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, it's Halloween. It is Halloween. I had to get my computer back up so I could I think see what time possessed. of year it was. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that might have been. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I need to go smash the Ten Commandments now, but I'm not sure why. Mm-hmm. It's Halloween. <laughs> Can't stop myself. But if you're in Malaysia. Or Satan's we birthday, talk, we talked about, as I call it. Hey, we talked about Malaysia last week. Remember we With talked about Malaysia because yeah. there was a dog petting event for, for Muslims? <laughs> am, I get, am I getting that right, Solomon? Or Muslims, you can Muslims? say. Muslims? Uh, you just have to put a question mark at the end of it, and then you're pronouncing it correctly. Islam? I don't know. What about you? So there was an, a dog petting event, uh, but dogs are unclean in, in Islam. So uh, <laughs> this is not going to go anywhere good. <laughs> no, there's death threats. I'm just doing my best. Sapoina. I'm just doing my best. Oh, uh, now there's death threats against the guy who organized it because Muslims are not supposed to touch dogs. Or I they have, have no to idea. wash their hands okay. six times with water and one time with dirt. Wow. Because nothing gets out dog like dirt. But that's beside well, that, the, the point. The dog's rolling dirt all That the was time. last yeah. week. This week we okay. got more news. Muslims are now prohibited from celebrating the Halloween festival, traditionally held at the end of the month in Malaysia, according to an edict released by the National Fatwa Council today. Beca- that's a great word. Fatwa. 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 You don't want a fatwa. No, you don't. Against you, but it is a great word. Based on the fatwa... Released on its website, the council has categorized Halloween as a Christian celebration. Oh, who knew? That's good news for all of us, there, though, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> no more prohibition. No more harvest therefore, parties. Yeah. Therefore, it's against Islamic teachings. So, so Muslims can't celebrate Halloween because it's Christian, and Christians can't celebrate Halloween because it's satanic. And Satanists don't actually believe in Satan, as we've now learned. They just think it's funny. <laughs> Everything Man. upside is right upside this, down is right side. This holiday's in trouble, but maybe is this is trouble. an opportunity for some unlikely unity. Claire, so maybe oh, really? Muslims and yeah. 
the more fundamentalist Christians can, can have get Harvest together Fest. and get together. Yeah, and yeah, have Harvest happen. Fest. Just don't bring your dog. Yeah, and you, no dogs allowed. And you can't eat too much candy on Halloween, otherwise you're going to get fatwa. <laughs> oh, oh, I yes. Think, I think you are oppressing a historically marginalized group. That's right. Thank uh, you. So, but this leads people. this leads to a story that Drew actually brought up to me on the uh, on a, a blog post by Alicia Donovan. Fatwa Don- sounds Donovan. like, like a, a Chinese criminal mastermind. Alicia Donovan, is that a name? Donovan. Yeah, you, you got to go see a fatwa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who says this is a, this is a Christian? Okay. Are you guys still with me? I'm here. Right okay. Here. Says yes. Halloween is a Christian holiday. Okay. Mm. Uh, she says, but she won't rehearse the history of All Hallows even even and All Hallows Day on the church calendar. Won't rehearse the history of the Protestant Reformation begun with a bang on Halloween's 1517. And he was dressed as a witch when he hung the thing on the door. Of he course. Was, he was trick or treating. Luther. Yeah, he was with a. He had a plastic pumpkin. Well, you know what he happened. He was going door to door, <laughs> he, and the church and when no didn't one have gave any candy. candy. Exactly, that was his trick. That was, yeah. his trick. Yeah, that was his trick. Boy, if I got it, how, was he Jewish? No, I okay. split the church in half. <laughs> he was quite like anti-Jewish, that? actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was only at the end of his life. Boy, yeah. if, trick or treat? Oh no, treat! I've got a trick for you. Ninety-five theses <laughs> and two hundred years of chaos. You sound like uh, Hans and Franz. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, he was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That was Martin Luther. Um, She says, I'm here to talk about anthropology, inversion holidays, to be exact. Have you ever heard of the inversion holiday? Yeah. Really? Yes, yes. You know this? Well, Mm -hmm. I heard about it this week when I read this story. Inversion, well, don't pretend that you've known about this forever. Oh, of course, inversion Because of the story that we're talking about That's what my doctoral thesis was on. (laughs) Inversion holidays? Yes. Those are holidays where you wear your pants on backwards. Yeah. It's like Festivus Boy, for the rest of us. <laughs> sit down. Yeah. Inversion holidays exist in many cultures. They are days for reversals, turning things inside out, practical jokes, donning costumes to disguise ourselves and pretend to be what we're not, eating weird food and other topsy-turvy things. It's like Mardi Gras. Yeah, and yeah, I'll Purim. add this too. Like, okay, Carnival, like comes right before Lent. Yes, yeah, so right. you kind of get all your craziness out. Yeah, before so that's the, an inversion. The tough right. rules. Yes, and, exactly. and that's an inversion. Halloween comes right before All Saints Day. Sure, and Purim is one such festival in the Jewish. It's uh, Purim. It's Purim. Okay. It's what happens when you've trained your cat to use the toilet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're going to get some letters. <laughs> How many different cultures have we insulted on this podcast? <laughs> but you haven't quite gotten it down. Okay. Uh, Mardi Gras is another. <laughs> that is the correct pronunciation. I'm trying to figure oh, out really? for once in okay. the Bible. I, yeah. it's, and it made me laugh. I couldn't help it. It would it make you laugh. It's hard to say it to the kids with a straight face. <laughs> We're celebrating Purim. <laughs> Oh, my. Inversion <laughs> holidays are thought oh. to serve several purposes in a society, some of which are more intriguing than others. But I want to put inversion rituals in a Christian context and ask, what better way to celebrate All Hallows' Eve than to invert the world for a moment, laugh at the devil, make light of death for a moment, uh-uh. reasserting the fact that tomorrow all will be well and all manner of things well, as C.S. Lewis remarked in his preface to the screw tape letters, one thing the devil cannot stand is to be laughed at, not to be taken seriously. How does C.S. Lewis know that? Did He's he, C.S. Lewis. Did he have, okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Come he on. Have inside information. He Come was on. channeling Martin Luther, who, it is said, expressed the idea that the very best way of getting rid of the devil, <laughs> if you cannot do it with the words of Holy Scripture, is to rail and mock him. He cannot bear scorn. And we hit to pump him up. That's the not devil a little Austrian. <laughs> the devil doesn't have a sense of humor. Huh? Yeah, That's what yeah, yeah, both yeah. Luther and Lewis have, have been convinced of that. So Halloween is a, for me. is a night full of humor. And it is... Uh, is it really mocking the devil? It's mocking the it's, devil. It's lighthearted. And, but, yeah. and says um, Alicia Donathan, it is the right kind of Christian humor. Uh-huh. It's a it's a day, night full of humor. Humor exists when the potency of evil has been completely dismantled. There was a, ah. a, a ah. there was a season when I was studying <laughs> um, slave religion for a while mm-hmm. in, in the antebellum South, or actually after the Civil War. Also, and the, I forget where it was. Maybe South Carolina. There was a festival that the freed slaves after the Civil War used to do every year, where they would have a parade and they would reenact 
uh, scenes of slavery, including the, the, oh, the wow. buying and selling and trading of slaves and the docks. And, all that. and they and they did this whole celebration, but it was a mockery saying mm. we're free now. We don't have to. But it was a really interesting because you mm. think, well, why would you right. do that when it's been such a there? horrible, painful part right. of your history, but it was a liberating kind of activity sure. that goes, we're, we're, we can make fun of it now because we're not in, in, in okay. ca- you know, chained by it. So Alicia Same thing here. Donathan yeah. would yeah. say that's what Halloween is for Christians. I've never heard this before. This, no. this feels... You've not heard that? Well, this take that, on Halloween? That, that we dress up as devils to make fun of him because we're free well, of his power now? I don't know if that's true anymore, but I think that is true of the origin. Really? It's not unlike Mardi Gras where you have this purge of, of uh, okay. you know, behavior before the holiness of Lent. And same yeah. thing with, with all <laughs> well, saints. that's questionable. Day. Well, back in the day. <laughs> but sure. Mardi but Mar- yeah. Because okay. All Saints Day, November 1st, is a celebration of all the faithful people who've gone yes, on before us. Yes, yes, And so All Hallows Eve. May all who go before us find us oh, yeah. faithful. Right. Yeah. Steve Green? That's what I forget. I the think so. same Andy thing Patty, here is the somebody. day before. That's all my favorite S- Halloween song. <laughs> <laughs> the day before. <laughs> The day before All Saints Day is a day to mock all of the people and, and spirits who've died who are evil, and you make fun of it and you mock that it and you kind of. Nice I see it more as like almost like a catharsis or right. venting of your your darker impulses. Well, that's maybe in Canada because you guys were, <laughs> they don't were, have any darker impulses. Yeah, well, on. because they purge them yeah. on Halloween. That's the one time really? of the year we're not polite and apologetic. Right. Well, it's like the movie The Purge. Oh, yeah. I didn't see We're, that. Oh, it's a We're good one for, for the whole family. Yeah, good for the whole family for 12 hours once a year over, yeah. overnight. Oh. All crime is legal so that people get it out of their system, including murder. Because that's yeah. all. Because that, that never leads to anything right. bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I have a hard time putting together mocking, well... Halloween, as I've traditionally known it, you know, haunted houses and such. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's obviously like Christmas, it's constantly evolving. You know, yeah. it's morphing mm-hmm. further and further away from whatever it was initially. Um, but as a parent, I, my reaction to that is, wait, I don't, I don't want to let my kids get that fascinated with the dark side. Even if they're mocking it? Things. Well, yeah, and how yeah, do you know, see, are you mocking it, Johnny? Because <laughs> right. you're really getting into playing Lucifer in the school uh, parade. Well, part of the problem is we don't celebrate November 1st anymore as oh, right. All Saints Day, so we don't sure, have the light So part we've of got it. Mardi Gras, we got the no dark Lent. Side. Exactly. Yeah. We've got Mardi Gras, but no Lent. Is that America? That's no, America. Or what? We, yeah. we fatten ourselves, but there's no lean time. No. I don't know if I quite buy the argument here, but at yeah. the same time, these holidays, like you said, they're they're always evolving. They're pretty yeah. flexible. So and these people are like, oh, we shouldn't even celebrate Christmas because it has some pagan elements or Easter. And right, yeah, right. That doesn't. Yeah, sure, it does. Whatever. But I mean, <laughs> they're all syn- syncretized. Exactly. With, with yeah. Cultural yeah. ideas. And it's so synchronized. Our, it's our it's basically syncretized. Okay. It's to some degree what you make it. So if, if you're not really like, well, can I celebrate Ramadan and say it is what I make it? <laughs> hey, you know what? There's I read an article not Maybe. too long with ago about Muslim how Ramadan friends. Ramadan is now becoming the primary season for shopping in in much of the Muslim world because people fast during you the can't day. Eat. They fast yeah. during the day, and then they have parties every night to break the fast once the sun mm, goes down. Yeah. And it's also becoming a season, like Christmas has become in the West, where retailers are marketing heavily to for gift purchasing and all kinds wow. of other stuff. So consumerism infiltrates all these different religious traditions and ends yeah. up bringing its true religion to the forefront. I hate to see so. Ramadan going think, down like yeah. that. I think yeah. we can say Halloween has been pretty thoroughly infiltrated <laughs> yeah. with consumerism. We've Wouldn't forgotten the, the purity at its core. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the pure childhood fun of mocking the devil? Yeah, right. and, By and intravenous up sugar. Right? Why do we have to actually go door to door and ask for it? Why can't we get you know straight know. baseline kind of oh, sugar injections? Okay. All right, we yeah, gotta do our we gotta do our uh, our little plug for the, oh, yeah. with God daily devotion. It's time for a plug. Oh yes, it's time, time for a plug. Time for Sky's commercial plug. Yes. Speaking of the infiltration of commercial interests, not a hair plug. If there's anyone out there who would actually like to pay us to get their own plug. And sponsor yes. a podcast with a real product. We I'd would, be happy to end my plugs 
for a real product for your don't well, sell for someone like, like that. Because, okay. you know, this is just how it works. Okay. So if you have not subscribed yet to the With God Daily Devotional, it is available on my website, skyjitani.com slash devo. Uh, it goes out every morning. So I got a couple more uh, responses from people. This is from Joel. He says, I've always found Sky's way of explaining things to be very thoughtful, which is why I signed up for his Devo. The content is awesome. I found myself <laughs> talking to other people about what he, sh- what he shares in these devotionals. They really have the possibility to change how people relate to God. Thank you, Joel. Uh, one more. Jim, the With God Daily Devotional stirs my dependence and longing to be with God. Not to use God, but to know and walk with Him. As an executive, it helps me tremendously to start my day and to lead my staff and serve them with God at the helm. Can I give a testimonial? Sure. I, too, subscribe. No way. You, Drew Dick, to the are with a subscriber. God daily devotional. And I, this is how I describe it. I think it's the thinking man or woman's mm-hmm. devotional. Mm-hmm. There you go. And I'm not saying I'm a thinking man. <laughs> what are you saying about all the other devotionals? <laughs> well, <laughs> all the thoughtless in ones? general, yes, they're pretty thoughtless. Or they're just really emotional. Not that yours isn't. And then the, it has a prayer at the end, which I always yeah. find really interesting. A historic, historic prayer. Historic, historic prayer. Yeah. Yes. So if you're interested. Because they don't pray like they used to. That's no, right. they don't. Uh, if you want to subscribe <laughs> and go don't. to my website, it's $1.99 a month. And it will automatically renew you every month until you drop out and you don't want it anymore. And the new feature is you can also do a gift subscription and sign someone else up you want for the whole year for uh, $19.99, so a discounted rate. You can do all of that at skyjatani.com. Thanks, guys. And wow. spread the word. We need to spread kind of build the, the base yes. of subscribers so that I can actually keep doing this. Spread so. the word. Okay. Okay, we have one more story today. One more. Okay, so one more story. Can I tell a quick story about yeah. a prayer I prayed this week? It just reminded yes. me. This is a little weird. Was okay. it to you expand your territory? On, on the Phil Vischer podcast? <laughs> That j- <laughs> it came true. Okay, but no, no. Okay, this might be totally weird, but okay. I'm really tired right now. My ki- my two-year-old's been sick the last two nights. Throwing up in the middle of the night, thank you. These toddlers are so inconsiderate. So I'm a zombie. Mm-hmm. I'm at a church function last night. Mm-hmm. There are about 60 people there. We're going to eat dinner together. And they call on me to pray for Uh-oh. the meal. And I'm like in a sleep-deprived stupor. No. (laughs) But it honestly, I spouted the most freakishly inarticulate prayer you've ever heard in your life. Really? Do you know that clip of like Miss North Carolina at a beauty pageant when they asked her a question? Yeah. I always think of you when I see that. U.S. (laughs) Americans or something. Yeah. It was that combined with like Ben Stiller's prayer for Meet the Parents. Yeah. And there was a pause in the middle of it. I just lost it. And I didn't know where I was going. And then I got some like pity amens at the end. It was awful. What? So anyway, I I, <laughs> I hope that wasn't the end of the story. Okay, thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> that, that was it. I'm sorry. I just I feel so... like I had to get off my chest, and now I have to switch churches because. But you said the prayer was answered. No, no, I said it was awful. He said oh. your prayer was to be on the Phil Fisher podcast. Oh. I don't even think God understood this prayer. So did you then get up and tell everybody, listen, I know that was a really bad prayer. No, I didn't even acknowledge. I just kept. Just kept moving. You just he walked out of the building. Yeah. He, he said, he "Good said, night, folks." Amen. And That's turned it. and walked away. But I don't know. It was really he got embarrassing in his car for me. And drove it right yeah. into a tree I like Tiger Woods. Being like this is what happens. I went to college and stuff. This is what happens when you have children, Drew. Maybe that's it. Yeah. It's just the beginning You're of your stupidity. Your it, it, it was awful. Although we are very close to Halloween. That's true. Oh. Oh, and you did say you felt like a zombie. Uh Exactly. Okay, John Orberg. I'm going to blame the devil for that. John Orberg. John Orberg. You know who John Orberg is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, famous pastor, teacher. um, What else is he? What is he? A contributing editor at Leadership Journal. Yes. Contributing editor. He wrote he wrote a piece on um, on Mark Driscoll. You know, Mark Driscoll resigned. We talked about that last Mm -hmm. week. I think finally stepped down. Um, and his, his second point I thought was kind of interesting because in the statement about Mark Driscoll, uh, Ortberg says, I was struck too by the language quoted in news reports yesterday to describe this situation. The pastor, the board said, had been guilty of arrogance along with other attitudes and behaviors associated with arrogance, but had not been <clears throat> charged with immorality. And Ortberg said, which is very interesting, when did arrogance cease to be immoral? I suspect that most folks in our evangelical subculture will understand that immorality is really being used as a substitute term for sexual misbehavior. But why would we reduce such an important word to code language for one area of misconduct? This is a long-established reality of evangelical culture. Yes. Which is is. the only real sins. Yes. Are sexual sins. Are sexual sins. Or smoking. Everything else is permissible or excusable if you're highly effective or rich. And... 
the it's the sexual stuff that is, it drives me nuts. Yeah. I've been saying this for a while too. It's like I, it's not humorous. It's actually tragically funny. But it seems like I'll see like when a pastor finally has an affair or something, and people will say, "Oh my goodness, look at that! He was so effective and so skilled, and God had called him, and he was anointed." And then the devil took him down, and he had mm-hmm. this affair. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he fell a long time ago. The guy was a total jerk. He. <laughs> He was, you know, maybe preaching something that was totally wacky, right. you know, but you're right. It's just when they cross that big red line of mm-hmm. sexual immorality, mm-hmm. then you got Then he's got then, a moral failing. Then now before he was just a saint. Before he was an effective jerk for Jesus. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you can now, be a jerk for Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so 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 what's I, I like it. What what do you think should be done about this, Phil? C.S. Lewis wrote, if anyone thinks that Christian regard that Christians regard unchastity as the supreme vice. He is quite wrong. Actually, he's kind of quite right now. That is what Christians consider the mm-hmm. supreme huh. vice. But correct Christianity, according to C.S. Lewis, the sins of the flesh are bad, but they are the least bad of all sins. According to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil, is pride. Unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are mere flea bites in comparison. <laughs> it was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. And yet, ironically, that's the one that we actually celebrate among a lot of church leaders. Yeah. It's, the, it's that bravado and the arrogance. Right. And the... So do you, do you think if, you know, you know not, to, not to pick on Mark Driscoll, but if, if his elders had stepped in years ago and said, you've, you know, you've got some character issues here that mm-hmm. keep coming up, it wouldn't be where it is now. You know, he would have had the time yeah. to work on them. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a it's an indictment of not just Mars Hill, but the evangelical movement in general <clears throat> and its failure to really mentor and disciple and grow people in the fruit of the Spirit. We're more focused on effectiveness of mission rather than depth and gravity of one's soul. And this is what it produces. Well, and sometimes when someone is very talented, we give them a pass and allow them to consolidate power right. and not get that input and not create a culture of accountability. And then, yeah, you get all kinds of problems. Do you think that's why some people would rather have a podcast than actually be a pastor with an elder board? Well, they're power hungry, obviously. They're, if they don't want accountability. They just want to be able to say whatever they want. To that say must be it. And pronounce Muslim however they want to pronounce it. Well, going Or Islam. Islam. Here's Islam. the difference, though, Islam. Phil. In, in, yes. the, in this way, you're not that different than Mark Driscoll. <laughs> Thank you. In, wow, I'm looking wait, forward no, to No, but this. really, if you, if you go off the rails on this podcast, yeah. your, your audience is going to call you out. Yeah, mostly Solomon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Solomon. And, and I that's, appreciate it. And that's really what happened to Mark Driscoll, <laughs> is it wasn't the internal checks and balances that one would expect right. in an ecclesiastical right. hierarchy that called him The larger co- external community. It was the external community, the bloggers, the writers, the other that's people who, yep. who finally said enough is enough, yeah. and they started rallying Interesting. A, a, a movement to So kinda... the church still works on a global level. But the danger is, though, the way Scripture sets up the church, it should be the, the mature believers who have depth of character and, and a, a track record of faithfulness who are given then the authority to hold people accountable. Right? right, the elders, right. the overseers, and who actually, actually know you, and who actually know what's going yeah, on. Right. Whereas what we have now is essentially mob rule, right. where it's it's the masses of Christians out there who decide who rises and who falls, mm-hmm. who's accountable, and mm-hmm. we have no guarantee that the criteria they're going to use is in any way sure. accurate. So, okay, maybe some people are celebrating that Mark Driscoll was brought down and he was arrogant or whatever. It could just as easily be a very faithful teacher and a very faithful, godly person who's brought down because people just don't like what he or she is saying yeah, yeah. because it's mob rule. He's so, been popping up, by the way. Have you seen that? Yeah, he's not going Different into that he'll really? dark night. Like where's Waldo? So are, are you appealing for a pope? Uh, no. An evangelical pope? But I do yeah, think I like our it. local congregations like I'll do. I'll throw my name in the hat. I, <laughs> I, I think it is very important for local congregations and denominations to have overseers who are godly, faithful people of character that exhibit the fruit of the Spirit because when we yeah. don't have that, what we get is the internet rules and decides who stays and goes. Hmm. Hmm. And it should be a plurality, a plurality of, of leaders, not just hmm. one. Hmm. A plurality of all the bloggers. <laughs> right. <laughs> Keeping us in check. Okay. <laughs> That's all the time we've got for today. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> Halloween, the punch is green. The hors d'oeuvres are bloody, so listen to me, buddy. It's Christian, cause we're making fun of the devil. Because we think that we have beaten evil. And if we remember the next day is All Saints Day, then it might be okay to dress up like a ghost and go throw eggs at your neighbor's house the night before. That's what Drew Dick said. <laughs> so you can throw eggs at his head if you want to. Just don't insult him or anything he's done because he's Canadian and they take it kind of hard. Okay, see you next week. Bye, guys.